Hi, I'm going to talk about paper two of the OCR GCSE computer science qualification and just talk about how this paper works because it's a little bit more interesting than paper one, I would say. And also I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've got available to support with this exam. Because it is an exam, you've got two exams to do for OCR GCSE, at least for J277, which is the current specification code as I record it. Now paper two, called Computational Thinking, Algorithms and Programming, is not just pure programming, you've also got things like Boolean logic and some stuff about translators and different types of programming language uh, and some stuff from sorting and searching as well. So, so it's not just I can code Python or whatever language you're learning, it is a bit more to it than that. And speaking of the language you're learning, you've got to know a programming language for this paper. Actually OCR have not said what language you must pick. So I imagine most of you are doing Python, but some might be doing Java or Visual Basic or C Sharp. Any language really is, is, is acceptable, but you must know one. But we'll talk more about that later. Just to be really clear, paper two is worth exactly the same as paper one. Now, in my experience of doing previous OCR courses, people tend to do worse in paper two, not only because programming, not everyone clicks with it and not everyone puts the effort in to learning programming, but also just the second paper people tend to do worse in. People get really psyched up, really pumped up for paper one, we get to paper two a few weeks later and don't always put as much effort in, which is a, a big shame. If you're watching this a long time before your exam, please make sure that doesn't happen to you. So paper two, like paper one, is one hour 30 minutes and it's worth 80 marks. The main key thing to know, apart from bringing the obvious stuff, is that calculators are not allowed in this exam. The thing that makes it more interesting than paper one is there are two distinct sections within the exam. So let's look at those in more detail. The first section, section A, is worth 50 marks. So it is the majority of the 80 mark paper. And this is relatively typical. It's of course asking questions on programming and on algorithms and on building logic and so on. But it's mostly just a mix of, you know, one or two mark questions, maybe some multiple choice and some maybe three or four mark questions as well. But there is one extra question which requires a bit more thought, that's a six marker, and it is an algorithm question. So it'll be, it'll give you some scenario and you've got to write an algorithm to solve it. And interestingly, you can respond in quite a few different ways. Section A is really relaxed for this algorithm question. You can respond in pseudocode, so it's just sort of like similar to real programming. A flowchart, a bullet point is fine, or an actual programming language, either OCR or the one you've learned. So quite relaxed in section A. Section B requires a little bit more thought because section B is directly examining you on your programming ability, but also just knowledge. Okay, that might sound quite off-putting if you find programming hard, There'll be questions which get you to write code, but it's also about understanding how code works, thinking of how to improve programs, thinking of how you would design programs. So section B is only 30 marks. OCR explicitly recommends you spend 40 minutes on it. So that 10 extra minutes you've got in this paper is meant to be used in section B. Of course, it doesn't need to be. And just to be really clear on what I just said, actually, so this part of the paper is assessing you on four key words. Can you design code? Can you write code? Can you test code and can you refine code? So let's look at these words one by one in the context of how you might need to respond to these because unlike for one in section A, if you get an algorithm question, they're a little bit less relaxed potentially. So let's start with write because I think that's the most interesting one. This one, you, if it says write an algorithm, you need to respond in either the OCR exam reference language or the programming language you've learned, so something like Python. Now, they're not going to be too mean. They're going to remind you of this in the exam. It will say something like this. You must use either the exam reference language or another language you've studied. And if you responded in pseudocode or a flowchart or bullet points, you'd probably get no marks. So that's why you've got to go in knowing one of these two. Now, the exam reference language is a weird one. I've got a separate video on that, which goes into how it works. You do not need to learn it, but I think all of you should be aware of it. Now, for these questions, if you make a tiny mistake, you'll not be penalized. If you forget a colon, say, or if you do something uppercase when it should be lowercase, usually that will not get penalized because it's a bit harsh. You haven't got an ID to test things for you. Now for the other ones, let's look at refine first of all. So refine, if you refine something, you improve it. So here, these questions will be something like, okay, there's a bug in this code. Can you fix it? 
uh, this code's inefficient, can you rewrite a more efficient version? So usually building on previous code and it will be really clear if you must answer in a natural language, but sometimes you can answer it in written English, but it will let you know. Designing is where it gives you a scenario and you come up with a potential solution. So often this will be in pseudocode or a flowchart, but again, it might be in normal natural English or just written text occasionally. And testing really depends on a question, but this is where things like trace tables and test plans come into play. Trace tables being the harder version, I'd say. People often forget trace tables. They're not very obvious in the specification, but they are there. On preparation of paper two, it's not that different to any other exam. It might feel different, but it's really, it shouldn't be different. You should still sit down and revise it really seriously. So making sure you know all of the theory, it's not just, can you code Python? It's much more to it. Okay, and the specification is the document the exam board produce, which tells you exactly what's going to come up. Most of this actual document is just aimed at teachers, but the subject content part of it, usually in the middle, is something like this, where it tells you the exact things you must know. So print it out, highlight it, make sure you know all of it, especially if you're not that strong at programming, you might find there are certain things you can pick up quite easily just from using this. And it's easier said than done, but you've got to know a programming language. If I said to you, you know, learn Italian for your exam next week, you couldn't, of course you couldn't, no one could, because it's a full language. But something like Python, you can sit and watch a three hour playlist or a three hour video and pick up a fair deal. You're not gonna be perfect, but you might pick up how to use a variable or an if statement or a loop or a sub program. And the other stuff, that's just a, a, a guide, right? You can pick stuff up even if you feel like it's not a strong point. And if it is a strong point for you, you might still find there are certain gaps which you spot in the specification. There are definitely people for paper two who give up and don't bother revising it because they feel they're either too good or not good enough and they feel it's not much point. But every single person across that spectrum should prepare hard for paper two. And that includes doing extra practice for the trickier stuff, things like the trace tables, things like the writing algorithm questions. And I've got two videos, two very long videos, which I dedicated to those two topics. They'll be linked in the description. And speaking of my videos, you know, I've got a paper two playlist. It's much shorter than the paper one one because the content's more condensed. Use the playlist, make sure you use the actual playlist linked in the description. I've got lots of similar playlists on my channel, including some old ones. Use it because it contains the latest videos for paper two. And for Python, I've got a separate playlist because it's more generic. Again, you can watch those and hopefully learn Python, ideally more practically. And there's also a book by CGP, which I co-wrote, that is paid. So it's a physical book. So there'll be a link to that in the description. Either or, you might wanna use both to learn Python. And to be honest, Python and other languages, there's lots of content on YouTube if you put the effort in to try and learn it. So paper two, more complicated. Hopefully this was useful if you weren't totally clear on how this paper works. If you've got the exam coming up soon, I wish you all the best of luck and I hope it goes really well.